Assalamu alaikum, welcome back to Wealth and Wisdom. We continue our discussion about the use of debt as the modern form of slavery. The domination through external debt was a significant part of the imperialist policies of the major capitalist powers, it continues to plague the 21st century in new forms. The dramatic rise of African debt is a salient example. Indeed, the shockwave following the financial crisis of 2007 to 2008 had the double effect of slowing down economic development and wetting the appetite of banks and private investors who were enticed to invest their money in the sovereign debt of the countries of the South. Indeed, the more a debt is risky, the more profitable it is thanks to high interest rates. Internal factors are also contributing to the increase in debt without explaining its recurrence, lack of investments by governments in infrastructure, low tax revenues, speculation on domestic public debt, capital flight, corruption, etc. These dysfunctions of the so-called democratic regimes are not the prerogative of African countries. They reflect the very character of the global economic system dominated by international financial institutions, World Bank, International Monetary Fund, etc., and informal groups, G7, G8, Club of Paris, Institute of International Finance, etc. As such they are at least partly responsible for the levels of development and indebtedness of countries of the South. In today's world, physical slavery no longer exists, but it has been replaced by economic bondage and servitude, wherein the relationship between the most powerful nations on earth and weaker countries has become akin to the relationship of a master and a slave. For example, loans disguised as aid packages are given by rich countries to weaker nations who have no option but to accept whatever strings are attached. Invariably, the crippling levels of interest mean that the short-term loans lead to long-term misery and liability. The end result is that the defaulting country has no choice but to bend to the will of the dominant nation. Such slavery is utterly immoral. Through the simple mechanism of interest, colossal sums are transferred from people, businesses and states to creditors. However, economists almost never bring themselves to propose its abolition. Its presence in the popular imagination is marginalized by a mainstream economic paradigm which progressively frees the economic debate of any moral arguments. The issue of interest has always been considered a moral issue, since the time of the Greeks at the very least. Aristotle was opposed to it and states that the most hated sort, and with the greatest reason, is usury, which makes a gain out of money itself, and not from the natural object of it. For money was intended to be used in exchange, but not to increase at interest. And this term interest, which means the birth of money from money, is applied to the breeding of money because the offspring resembles the parent. Wherefore of a mode of getting wealth this is the most unnatural. The teaching of the Holy Quran on the subject of interest is very clear. From the onset of Islam until this day, interest has been equated by Muslims with usury and every economic evil which is the creature of interest, has been made an economic crime. Those who devour interest do not rise except as rises one whom Satan has smitten with insanity. That is because they say, trade also is like interest, whereas Allah has made trade lawful and has made interest unlawful. Interest is prohibited in Islam because it tends to draw wealth into the hands of a small circle, and thereby adversely affects its equitable distribution. It promotes idleness in the moneylenders and kills in them all incentive to help others and chokes all springs of sympathetic behavior. The moneylender takes advantage of and makes profit from the need and distress of others. While on the one hand, interest causes the lender to exploit other people's wants, it creates in the debtor a tendency to do things carelessly and in haste, incurring debt regardless of his capacity to pay back, thus doing irreparable moral injury to himself and the lender. On closer scrutiny, we observe that interest is the opposite of welfare. Welfare is based on sympathy, kind-heartedness and generosity, whereas the basis of interest is selfishness, miserliness and exploitation of others' distresses. It introduces a debt trap mechanism, 
which leaves the debt a little chance of leaving, and countries affected by it can only get out of this vicious cycle by declaring bankruptcy or waiting for the unlikely debt cancellation from the money lenders. If you learn something don't forget to like and subscribe. Until next time, Assalamu alaikum.